Okay. So uh, this piece now we can align up here. These, this guy I'm gonna ignore because uh, it's in the correct place, but it's not flipped the correct way. It has to be over here actually, like that. Uh, so now I have four pieces aligned. That's pretty good. So I just join them up by turning the centers. Okay. Um, now the thing is, um, you cannot replace this uh, row of edge pieces with this, I'll just show you why. Because if you do, so now we've replaced it with a solved edge, when we return these center pieces, we'll be breaking this up, which we've already solved, and we don't want that. Um, so, let's see here. You wanna make sure you replace it with an unsolved group of edges, so we can replace it with this. Like that. So we put these unsolved edges here, and we just realign the centers. And it doesn't matter if we break up that group of edge pieces because they're not salt. Okay. So now we have two. We have one here. And actually, we just have to join up these two. These two right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to align them again and simply join this right here like magic. And remember, I can't put this in its place. I have to replace it with an unsolved group of pieces, like that. And then I can simply turn it back. Okay. So basically, you continue doing that until all of them are solved. And there are some difficulties later on that I'll show you. Okay, so when you start coming down to your last two edge pieces, edge uh, groups here, uh, it becomes difficult. See, I have all the rest solved here, except for these two. Um, because now you don't have any unsolved groups to replace your um, edge thing with. Uh, you'll see why later. Um, well, actually, right now you'll see. So here we see that we need to put this piece right here. Um, and when we try to turn it into place, like that, uh, we see that we have nothing to replace it with on the top or the bottom. Um, so what we have to do is we have to use a, a little algorithm, or you can just make it up on the go. And the idea is that it flips this entire thing around um, so that this empty spot will be right here. And it turns out any set of moves that does that will work. So I'm going to put it in the top first. So now it's right here. And then I'm going to place it back, except I'm going to place it so this little slot is exposed to the misaligned centers. Like that. So now I have this here um, aligned. And it turns out when I turn this back, this edge piece inner wing edge piece will go into place. Okay, and now I see I have a dreaded parity already, um, but I'll just do this again. So I see this has to go here, well, it has to go here, and then this piece will come back here, because we'll flip this around and it'll come back like here. Um, move it into place. I know it's incorrect, but you'll see that it has to be done incorrectly. Um, sort of. I guess there's... wait, no. I want to make sure I don't break up my block here, so I can turn this around. Okay, let's turn it back. So, I flip this. Now this empty spot is here. When I turn this back, you'll see that I've solved this edge in the process, but I have a parity. This is known as a parity because there are two wing pieces that need to be swapped. And the fix for a parity is to use a long, ugly algorithm. Um, so I sort of came up with this one. Uh, the idea is that you take the... Uh, I'll, I'll write this in the commentary, but... You take the center row that includes the parity edge piece, wing edge piece, and you turn it down, you turn the top around, turn this down, the top around, down, around, down, around. Keep doing that 
until the centers go back to normal. And then what you do is you use a simple commutator with a conjugate at the beginning. So that uh, first turn is your conjugate. These are advanced concepts. You don't necessarily have to follow them. Um, and you do x, y, x inverted, y inverted. And that solves some things that you screwed up by fixing the parity. And then you turn this back. And now, as you see, you've mixed up a few pieces, but um, now the parity should not, not be present any longer. Now, um, yeah, this will go here, then I'll flip this, and then this will go back into this empty slot because it will be flipped. Okay, let's begin now. Move it into place. We have to flip it around. Uh, okay, so now we flip this upside down while maintaining the top. And now we move this back. And as you can see, this uh, wing piece moved into the empty slot. And in the process, we also solved this one around on the other side. And now we've completed the reduction step. And we have, now we have our block solved as well. Now, um, now that you have a 3x3 three three configuration and you have your block solved, I would really recommend you use the Petrus method, but in reality you could use the Friedrich method and even a method like the beginners. So for the beginners method you would just have to um, put an edge piece right here. That would be like your cross. So you put this right here and then you would uh, solve the corners and then you put the edge pieces in normally. Uh, just by turning the outer faces, which are analogous to the uh, faces of a 3x3. You might be able to hear the uh, leaf blower outside. It stinks. Um, for a Friedrich method, you do something similar. You'd put the edge piece here, like your cross. Or you could put it here, I guess. doesn't matter. Um, and you... Yeah. Well, actually, this is your typically your bottom. Because it's black. I like black as my bottom. And then you keep solving. But... Um, in the Petrus method, uh, you're not, you normally have a block uh, for in, in the middle of solving. And you can take advantage of this and simply fix your bad edges. So, let's see here. I'm not used to the Petrus style bad edges. I'm used to ZZ. If you're a ZZ solver, this is moderately easy. And once you've oriented all your edges, you basically have an RU group, which is really easy. I mean, it's not completely an RU group because there's a permutation thing that goes on with the corners. That's another story. So here's a piece. I'm going to do some block building right now. Here's a piece, here's a piece, and here's a piece. Uh, I'll stop using the camera viewfinder. It's kind of difficult to use this. So I made my corner edge pair, and my center edge pair, and we'll join things up. There we go. So we have that. I need to make a corner edge pair here. And I'll simply... Oops, I almost had a piece pop, but I didn't. Here's my corner edge pair. And I'll put it in place. So now I have my F2L and oriented edges. Uh, I could have used winter variation there. I should have. Let's see here. Uh, I have a V case, so just do this. Inter variation is my favorite. So I have the OLL while inserting the last corner edge pair. And I'm not going to pretend that I can do a G perm on a V cube 7. I can normally do it on a 3x3, but it involves one of these kinds of turns, which is really difficult. AUF. Now it is all solved. Yay, we solved the V-Cube. That's so happy. Okay, so if you have any questions, please comment. Uh, some things might not have been as clear as I wanted them to be, but hopefully you'll get it just by watching me. Thank you, and good luck solving.